Well, I got so excited because I come to church this morning all ready with the word and everything ready to go. And I do faster. Can we watch a movie? <laughs> he goes, what? I said, I want to watch this one. I haven't brought it. He won't let us watch it. But that's okay because I got my sermon out of it anyway. <laughs> We talked last week, and I told you that it was going to carry over. We talked about tearing down walls last week. And how the first walls we had to tear down was the walls we put between us and God. And we do that by repenting and going to the altar. And then I said, then we had to build up a spiritual wall. And I said, how do we do that? Who was here last week? How did we start the building of that spiritual wall? Starts over here in this section. Jesus. The cornerstone. We need to start with the cornerstone. And Jesus is our cornerstone. And I talked about putting on our spiritual wall was putting on the armor of God. Yeah. Was building all that up. We need to be careful of the armor we put on though. There's a lot of fake armor out there. And it sounds good. It looks pretty. But it doesn't work. You want to make sure you put on the full armor of God. So we kind of went through that last week. So today, my key verse is in Psalms 133, verse 1. It says, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Because today we're going to build the third wall, and that's the human wall. Nancy, we just took down the human wall. Yep, this is a special human wall that God has to put together. But if you'll go with me to Ephesians, chapter 4. I was uh, not able to sleep very good the, the other morning, and so I got up and I decided to watch <coughs> soul-lifting, spiritual edifying, get my mind on God movie. And so I put on Stuart Little. <laughs> you guys ever did that? You wake up during the night and you can't sleep, so you put on a movie. Well, I was waking up, and they always told me if God wakes you up at all hours of the night, it's because he wants to talk to you. So I figured he had something to say. To you. So I put on Stuart Little. And I was laughing until it, until it got to a part where God said, Now, is that funny? And I thought, Okay, that wasn't funny. I want to go back to where I was laughing. But I was watching my Stuart Little movie. And there's one part of the movie that really stuck out to me. How many of you have seen this movie? Oh, good. So you're going to know what I'm talking about. The rest of you need to go read the movie. <laughs> but what happens is Stuart's a little mouse that gets adopted by these two, by the human family. And he doesn't quite fit in. There's a difference. Of course, there are people and he's a mouse. There's going to be a difference. We talked about differences last week. There's going to be a difference. So anyway, it turns out this family has a pet cat. But the cat can't talk to the people. But Stuart Little can. Now tell me how to explain. The mouse can talk to the people, but the cat can't. But anyway, so the cat and the mouse, of course, are mutual friends. No, that not even. No. That cat does not want his owner to be a mouse. How humiliating. So at this one part of the movie, and I, and I laugh like crazy every time I get to it, it's when she collects the laundry and she puts it in the washing machine. And Stuart accidentally gets put in the washing machine. And she closes it and starts a washing machine. And you see the washing machine going around. You see this little mouse going, Mom! 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 I'm in here! Mom! I'm in here! And Mom turns around and walks away because she doesn't realize she's put a mouse, her son, in the washing machine. <laughs> and then, so she goes about doing her thing, and here comes the cat. And the cat's looking at the washing machine and kind of smiling. Stuart's going, oh, Snowball, get me out of here. And Snowball's going, no. 
I, I think I like you right there where you're at. I mean, you're not going to cause me any more problems. The family's going to acknowledge me. You're going to stay in the washing machine. And I'm sitting there laughing, and all of a sudden I thought, sometimes I feel like I'm in the washing machine. And people are looking at me, and I'm going, help! Can you help me? And they're sitting back going, no, you learned this one all by yourself. <clears throat> How do we call them good Samaritans? <laughs> but then, you know what? She realized something was not right. You know, moms, we know that. We know something. When something's not right with one of our kids. There's something that kind of clicks inside of us. And we know something's not right. We start checking it out. And she starts checking it out. I will get to the sermon because this is part of it. And she starts checking it out. And lo and behold, she sees her son in the washing machine. She opens the door and gets him out of there. Oh, my goodness, do her. Are you okay? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. You know, you know how we act when our kids get in a situation. Are you okay? Mom, I wrecked the car. Oh, okay. How's the car? That's not how we answer. The first thing we say is, are you okay? Did everything work out okay? And then dad goes, you wrecked the car? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm along. <laughs> but she gets him out of there. And I, I stopped the movie at that point. Because the Lord really spoke to my heart. Because I knew today's message was building up human walls. Walls that we can use as moral physical, mental, and spiritual support. We need those walls of people that we can depend on. People that we can rely on that when we feel like we're stuck in that washing machine and we're banging on it going, don't you see I'm hurting? And you know what? Sometimes we don't see it. But sometimes God just kind of puts something in our heart that says, just go over and lay your hand on your shoulder and say, Lord, just bless them today. Father, just touch them in a very special way today. Lord, do you know whatever the need is today? And that's our good spiritual wall. The Bible says to fail not to assemble yourselves together. Why? For the edifying of the saints. For the building up. We need each other. Yeah. We need each other. Now, I tripped over the dogs here a few weeks ago. <coughs> they, uh, I have little dogs, and at night time, I don't see them very well. And they're all white except one. He's black. And I tripped over the dogs, and I tore a ligament in my leg. But it took it about three weeks before the bruise really came out to show its colors and everything. But I felt it for that time until it actually showed itself. Sometimes we have pains and we trip over things and we don't see it as the body of Christ until it starts to show the colors. And the colors may be they're not at church now. Or why haven't I heard you so and so lately? Have you noticed they've not been in church? And by then, the color has already started showing in the room. We need to be a unity wall, edifying, building up. Well, let's go to Ephesians 4 now because I just really love this book. And I'm going to read all 16 verses because you can't stop anywhere. But it says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to have a walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. How many of you remember this verse from last week? Just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. 
Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Now, this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he must first have descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave to himself, and he gave to others, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body, till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning and craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. How do we build a human wall? I'm going to break this down, and I'm just going to read it. Because I think God spoke to my spirit better than I can repeat it. So Ephesians 4, starting with verse 1. How do we build a wall? We walk worthy. We strive to grow. We're not perfect. If you are, I'd like to talk to you after the service, and we'll have a very quiet time to get into it. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, Pastor Craig, but even as a pastor, you know what I learned? I'm not perfect. Yeah. Amen. I make, I make more mistakes. I heard that. I make more mistakes. And you know, it's the people that make the point to point them out. They don't even give God time to point them out to me. I mean, I can make the mistake and turn around and it looks like there's a Christian right there in my face. And I think, where did you go from? I just made the mistake. And I tell the Holy Spirit, you were supposed to stop me before they got here. <laughs> we are to strive, to walk worthy, to grow. How do we grow? We read the word. We fellowship with each other. Verse 2. Bearing with one another. Well, he said, she said, I really don't care who said it. Sure. Wasn't that nice? That just came out so smooth. I didn't even have that part wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard, I wish you wouldn't tell me what you heard because that makes it secondhand news. If I don't hear it firsthand, I don't want to hear it at all. I used to have this thing that I did because... When I was pastoring my own church, people would call and they would start complaining about, should I say petty stuff? No, that would have been somebody. They would start complaining about some of the most ridiculous stuff. And so I would say, just a minute, please. And I would go over and I would turn on my garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, okay, go ahead. And I just let them tar off their heart out while it went in the garbage disposal. Because you know why? We as the body of Christ are not garbage disposals. We are to be bearing with one another, lifting each other up, edifying, building up. And when we make a mistake, oh, and I hate to use the word cannibalism, and I've heard it so many times, but did you know that Christians are the worst on Christians? We're supposed to be building each other up, and I think we get the first weapon we can find, and when someone falls, go, I told you they'd do 
that. I knew they was going to do that. You see, I heard that came from so and so. I could have told you they'd have said that. Well, did you see what she wore? Well, excuse me, where's the edification? We're to build a wall around us of people so that when someone is hurt, they can step inside the security of that wall. Paul said, follow my example. Boy, I know a lot of Christians that shouldn't say that today. Because some of us would get into a lot of trouble. I know. I have followed the example of some of them and had to step back and go, wait a minute here, bud. That's not the word. We're to follow the example of the ones that God puts around us as they follow the example of Christ. And if you don't see the fruit coming out of them that's God fruit, don't follow that example. It's real easy. We're to bear one another, build each other up. Verse 3, <laughs> working to keep unity in the bond of peace. Oh, my gracious stars. <laughs> Someone told me one time you should have been a stand-up comedian. <laughs> because I went to a state meeting one day, and everybody in the room was fighting. Nobody had a positive word to say. And they were talking about my son. And I waited and waited. Finally, I just got up and walked out of the room. And pretty soon the director came out and said, where are you going? I said, anywhere away from you guys. And they said, well, we're putting your son's program together. And I said, my God, I hope not. Because you guys aren't even organized. How are you going to organize his life? I said, I will not come back in there until we agree to disagree. Did you know you could do that? We are not all going to agree on the same thing. I don't want them to wave a flag in my church because just because I don't like it. Well, you know what? Let's agree to disagree and send them to the back wall. I don't want them to do this because I don't want to. You know what? Let's agree to disagree that we worship differently. I don't like the way she preaches. I like the way he preaches. Well, you know what? That ain't going to change. So you might as well get over it. <laughs> I'm honest. I've been like this for 58 years. I'm not about to change now. We are be working in the unity and the bond of peace. We need to learn to agree to disagree in the unity of peace. Can we do that? God said we could right there in verse 3. He said that you're working in the unity to keep it in the bond of peace. Now I want to skip all the way. You guys were worried that I was going through all 16 verses. <laughs> I want to go to verse 11. So why did he give us pastors, teachers, evangelists, and all this? Well, because 12, to equip the saints and build up the body. Can I let you know I'm a secret? I mean, it's not even a secret. That only works when you show up at church. Oh, I think I just lost everybody. <laughs> you know, it's hard to build people up when you can't get in contact with them. And every time we make a mistake, where's the first place we avoid going? We think, well, stay away from the church because they'll be the first ones to get up and go, I know what you did. Yeah, there's an act of compassion again <coughs> that we show so graciously. It's to equip us, to teach us how to build our faith up, how to put up that human wall that we can be in a secure place. That if we're hurting, we can walk into God's house and people are going to put their arms around you. It doesn't matter if you're 10 feet tall or 2 feet tall. It doesn't matter if you're 10 pounds or 400 pounds. It doesn't matter if you haven't had a bath in a month. Yes, it really does matter. But <laughs> <laughs> We are to be compassionate. And how can we learn to be compassionate if we don't 
fellowship together and build that bond and build that wall. You need that security wall. That's why we have pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets and apostles and to help us build ourselves up. And then verse 13 says, until we all come into the unity of faith. And that's not going to happen until the Lord comes. So that means we're going to be working on it a long, long time. That wall's not going to come up tomorrow. We're not going to be in the perfect unity of faith until the Lord comes. But you know what? The Bible says we're striving to be in the unity of faith. Amen. We're striving. We're making steps. The kids' song that my kids used to do when I was an evangelist was two steps forward, one step back. I may be small, but I can do that. You know, sometimes as Christians, we need to remember, we may make two steps forward, and then we slip back and we go, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. And I want to tell you, it's worth it. Find a Christian brother and sister that's part of your security wall. Latch on to them and say, I need prayer. There's been so many times people have come to me and they sat and talked, and before they'd leave, I'd go, well, you have a good night. And they'd leave, and the Lord would say, you didn't pray with them. I said, was I supposed to? He said, that's why I brought them. Oh, I thought it was to build me up. <laughs> and by me. Help me to be secure. And the Lord said, so what do you do after you do that? You're supposed to be building someone else up. So, until we all come into the unity of faith, verse 14, so that we will no longer act like, oh, this is a good one. Should I shut my eyes when I read this one? No, I'll read it wrong. So we will no longer act like children, tossed back and forth, being easily deceived. I love working with children. You know, they'll believe anything. Watch out when your kids are being taught. Now, I met the cutest little three-year-old girl. She can talk your leg off. <laughs> I, I mean, she's just cute as a button. And I was sitting down at Walmart, and she come up, and she said, Are you shopping? I said, What? Are you shopping? <laughs> you know, I, I'm such a great interpreter of three-year-olds. I had to lean in and say, Say what? And it wasn't because I was getting old, by the way, just so you know. She said, are you shopping? And I said, oh, no, honey, I'm through shopping. Oh, did you find it? What? Did you find it? Are you shopping? She's probably asking, did I buy anything? Yeah. No, I didn't buy anything. She said, then you didn't shop. <laughs> So we got to talking, and I said, have you ever been to church? She goes, yeah. Suddenly she quit talking so much. And I said, well, did you like it? Yeah. So her mother's standing there. She's just kind of smiling. And I said, do you want to include me in why she suddenly quit talking? Because that's not normal. <laughs> I know, because she's a chatterbox. <laughs> and her mom goes, well, she went to church last Sunday. And it's the old faithful thing about Jonah and the whale. Oh. And how the whale swallowed Jonah. And she, she believes that. What she doesn't believe is he's spitting back out, because he was probably a hungry whale. <laughs> And that's why you ate him. And when you're hungry, you don't eat your food and then spit it back out. So she can't buy the fact that that well spit Jonah back out because that had to be a hungry well. After all, he ate Jonah. <laughs> and she just couldn't get over that that teacher tried to tell her that that well spit Jonah out. She sat in class going, I don't believe that. <laughs> And so, 
I looked at her and I said, well, do you believe that now? She said, no. And I said, what if I told you that God gave the well a bellyache and he spit Jonah out? She goes, he shouldn't have ate him. <laughs> he should have watched what he was eating. And I'm sitting there looking at this three-year-old going, you, you know too much for your age. <laughs> but she was taking in everything. And while she's talking to me, she's taking in what's going on over here. And she's listening to what's going on over here. And all of a sudden, out of her mouth, she said, Mom, he cussed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there going, please, God, please, please let him be deaf. <laughs> and he looked at her and he said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. She said, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> and I thought, I want that girl on my wall. <laughs> I want her to be part of my security team. That when I need to go to God, because you know what the Bible says? The faith of a child. Because they believe, and they believe in the Bible says you train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they get older, they won't depart more. Now, Nancy, that's a lie. You know that's a lie because I have kids and I've raised them up in church and they're not in church. Oh, get off my back. Take it up with God. It's in his word. He said, train up a child in the way that they should go and when they're old, they will not depart from it. I want to tell you what that means. You bring them up in the word. God's not going to let them go to hell. If it's that last brain cell death move, it's still God's call. Amen. And what happens between that brain cell and God, we'll never know till we get to heaven. But if you trained up that child in the way of the Lord, he said when they're old, they won't depart from it. What a promise God made for our wall. That's a security that you can build into that human wall. My kids are going to be in heaven with me. My brothers and sisters are going to be in heaven with me. Oh, yeah, but they're living like hell now. <laughs> That's because we live on the planet that looks like But I want to tell you something. God looks here. And it doesn't matter what comes out here. Oh, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I said it also said that God looks at the heart. Because sometimes our mouth goes off without thinking. And we say things and we do things without thinking. And God looks at the heart. Stand on that promise, parents. Train up our kids in the way that they should go. And I don't care where they're at right now. When it gets down to that last brain thing, i got to tell you my theory. It's, it's Nancy's theory. I want to make it clear. Don't look it up in the Bible. There is no book of Nancy. This is Nancy. I've told you before. Nancy has a great imagination. Nancy believes that even after they're declared brain dead, I think God holds that spirit in his hand and he says, now you need to choose where are you going to go? Because this is your last chance. But do you want to wait until that day to make that choice? Because God means he's wrong. And he doesn't hold that spirit. And that last chance was when he came to your brain and said, today is the day of salvation. But I believe exactly what the Bible said. He said, I would that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. We need to stop being children. You're going, this is a really heavy message because the Bible says there's a time you quit drinking the, me the, the milk and you start eating the meat. you got to get to the meat. If you don't feel like you're making progress, change your diet. Get into the meat. I love reading the book of John. John's not the only book in the Bible. Get 
akin to the meat. So, that we will no longer act like children. Verse 15, but that we will speak the truth and grow up into him who is the head of the church, Christ. 16, join together every part doing, oh, this is, I'm going to go back to 15. But that we may speak the truth. Because you're not going to like verse 16. <laughs> Verse 16, join together every part doing their share in the work of the ministry of Christ, edifying, uplifting that which will bring growth to the body. Yes. I don't have a ministry. You just got one. You build the body. You edify. You're to strengthen that human role that people can come to you and say pray, and they don't have to worry about whether you're going to take it to 5, 10, or 400, or 3,000 on Facebook. No. But that you're going to take it up to God, and you're going to be sincere. Nothing hurts my heart more than to hear people say, would you pray for this? And someone goes, yeah, yeah, sure. And they walk away and never think of it again. I try so hard when someone says, will you pray? As I'm standing there in my spirit, just start praying, Father, whatever it is right now. Move in that house, move in that heart, move in the house, move in the car, move wherever it is. Right now, in Jesus' name. See, that didn't take very long. But that's building up that human wall. That you're secure with each other. Phew. So, how do you build a human wall? You work together in unity. In unity. Now, I have to laugh because I already had um, someone jump in on my message this morning. Because I was watching Facing the Giants. How many of you have ever watched that movie? That is an awesome movie. And right in the middle of that movie, that guy started sharing my scriptures to those high school kids. And I got upset. I said, hey, that's my message. But he brought out some points that I have in my message. And it was about building walls of security. Because Jeremiah was a prophet. And then I said he wasn't a bull prophet. <laughs> so Bruce and I have already had this discussion. So it was Jeremiah the prophet, not the bull prophet. And he has his own book in the Bible. Go read it. It's awesome. But he was a hurt prophet. Because no matter what he told the people, they didn't always follow through to the end. They'd get distracted. And God said, you need to build a city of protection around the city. And the king said, I don't have the people to do that. And the Lord told Jeremiah, tell each family, Build a wall in front of your place. Just your place. And so every family began to build a wall in front of their place. And you know what happened? This one built the wall all the way up to the end of his landline. Well, here was the other person's landline. And they had their wall started right there. And then here was the other person's landline. And they had their wall. They covered the entire city by building a wall of their own place. They protected their city. They became a unit. The Bible says in Jeremiah, they built a wall that a fox could not even get through. She's right. Church, we need a wall of people around us that the fiery darts of Satan can't get through. That the lies and the deceit that he uses other people to get to us can't get through. I um, I want to close a little differently this morning because I wanted a way to show you what I meant. So it's going to take everybody's cooperation, but I want you to get up and make a great big circle. 
and it's not going to fall and work on the film, but that's okay. So get up and just make a great big circle around the sanctuary and leave an open space in the middle. I want you to make a circle. Make sure it's a circle. Nobody behind you. Everybody's a part of that circle. Because this is the only way I know how to show you what I'm wanting to say. Now, if you guys would just leave a space right there open for me, please. Thank you. So, do we all, we're all part of that circle? Okay, listen to me. As long as you've got your human wall up, nothing can hurt you. Your spirit is close to you. You should be able to depend on the person to your right and the person to your left every time you have a need. And I want you to see something, though. That's my spot. And I'm not in it. Which means there's a problem in my life. Because I'm not where I should be. And so, what I want you to get a hold of is, instead of closing up the circle, you need to expand your circle to include the one that's missing. We did, we made you whole. I see that. And the problem is, it's down there, and I'm up here. Can you guys back up? There you go. Now, do you get my point? Not everybody is going to be in the convenience of your circle. Not every have my elbow. <laughs> Not everybody's going to be where they can just reach out and get your hand. And when they're not, you still need to be that secure wall that they can turn to. And if they're not where you're at, you go where they're at. And you pray, and you cry with them if they're crying, and you laugh with them if they're laughing, that's scriptural. But you keep that circle intact. And when someone gets hurt, and that link gets broken, the first thing as a church we should be doing is everybody should be running around this person and securing them around that wall and saying, look, Satan, we are the body of Christ. You don't get any part of us. So this morning, Father God, here's our wall. And I ask, I think of the old course, bind us together with, with cords that cannot be broken. And this morning, I pray that you take every person in this church, and not just the name church, I mean the body of Christ. And we're scattered all over in different buildings and under different names. And I pray that you bind us together in a human wall that when, you're, when your grace is falling, we all get it. When your blessings are falling, we all get it. And no one gets left behind. Lord, I pray for other denominations right now. Bless them in their services. Anoint those pastors. Anoint those teachers. Father, anoint the school teachers and the principals and the garbage collectors and the store clerks. And Lord, wherever anyone is, let them be part of your church world. Let them feel that no matter what's going on in their life, they have a wall around them that is secure. And I ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.